Hello, just Jamie here offering you a brand new emulation video. So before I start this tutorial, please like and subscribe and remember to hit notifications because I'm always uploading emulator tutorials as well as gameplay videos, modern C64 games or whatever. Uh, also be sure to follow me on my Facebook and links in the description for that. And lastly, just be sure I do have a Patreon and buy me a coffee. So let's get on with this tutorial. I am emulating and giving you a tutorial today for the awesome Commodore VIC-20. So the emulator I'm gonna be using for this not only caters for the Commodore VIC-20, but it also caters for C64, the Plus 4, 128, PET, uh, pretty much all the 8-bit micros. So what I'm gonna do is just head over to Device Emulator website. I'm not gonna download this, so if I just go to the Download tab here, and we got a range of options here, and this emulator covers different systems. So we got Apple, it, you know, Mac, there's a lot of operating systems that Vice caters for, but in this tutorial, I'm using Windows 11. So we just look at the Windows section here, and I'm gonna download this GTK3, which is currently at Vice 3.7, which is the latest version of this emulator. So just left click on that, and it's gonna take us to an external website, which is SourceForge, and SourceForge is a very trusted website, no problems there. So as you can see, it's only gonna take a few seconds to download this zip folder, not too long at all. So let's just drag and drop this folder we just downloaded, or rather a zip file, onto our desktop. And I'm gonna just double left click on this, and obviously we've got our folder inside which contains all the goodness and the power. <laughs> Whilst we're waiting for this, um, if you're into Commodore 64 or even Commodore Plus 4 or even Commodore Amiga, I've covered all of those systems and uh, you might want to check out my playlist for those tutorials. There's some really good stuff in there, especially the Commodore Amiga FSUAE tutorial I did the other day. That was awesome. Right, so once this is extracted, we can now delete this zipped file. And we're just going to actually grab a game to run inside this emulator. So links in the description for this, but a great resource for VIC-20 games, especially modern VIC-20 games, is itch.io. And you've got different publishers out there, like Cytronic, for example, which are linked up with itch.io. And I'm gonna download a Cytronic game, actually, using the itch.io website, which is Realms of Quest IV. And this is a free game, some VIC-20 games you're gonna to need to pay for. So just left click on that, and I'm gonna to go to Download Now. Now, this game in particular is optional. You can either support the developer by donating some money, as you can see. In my case, I'm gonna just go to No Thanks, just take me to Downloads, and I'm gonna download this. So let's just drag this out onto the desktop and we're done with web browser so we can now close this down and let's just go inside this realms of quest game uh, you've got different folders in here but the one we need is disk and i'm going to just highlight these and drag them onto my desktop now for some games for vic 20 especially a more complex-esque game like realms of quest you've also got a manual and this will obviously tell you how to play the game which is really cool very nice stuff. Thank you, Cytronic. So anyway, that's all your instructions side, and that's up to you to look at and explore in your own time. So anyway, let's close this down, and we can now delete this zipped file of Realms of Quest, because we just extracted. So let's take a look inside of this GTK3 Vice folder. This is where your emulator is located, and the first option here is bin. If you double left click bin, if I just go down quite a ways, we're gonna see some icons, and there we go. So, like I was saying just now, Vice caters for 8-bit Commodore Micros, as you can see here. Bit of a no-brainer, you've got the Commodore 64 DTV, you've got the standard Commodore 64, Commodore 128, 
uh, in sub on the Commodore PET and the Commodore Plus 4, even the Super CPU 64 supported, so you can play some uh, Super CPU enhanced games. Right, so let's just go to XVIC. This is the one for the VIC 20. If I just double left click on this one, and if you're using Windows 11 from time to time, you'll get this really irritating Windows protected your PC pop up to prevent you from using uh, shady software on your computer. So bypass this, more info, and run it. Okay, so clearly here we are now on our screen of VIC 20. So what you're going to need to do to load games on this, if you go to File, from here we're just going to go to Smart Attach. And from here, my games are located on my desktop. I've got two Realms of Quest, that's Disk A and Disk B. So to actually load these, I'm going to go to this one just here. In this case, uh, Disk B seems to be the opening disk to play this game. So I'm going to just highlight this Realms 4B and from here I'm going to just go to Auto Start. And there we go, so we are straight in to Realms of Quest IV. And we've also got Realms of Quest 2, so it seems in this package to be honest, I've not played this game. Um, I just booted it up a minute ago, but this is just a proof of concept. So I'm going to just select Highlight Rather and press Enter on Realms of Quest 1. And if we see a little red flashing symbol here, this is literally the disc being emulated. Okay, so as you can see, we're now into the game. Now, firstly, VIC-20 games, a lot of them don't support controllers. Uh, some do, some don't, but remember, the VIC-20 was a very old computer, and of course, most games were back then played with a keyboard. We can configure a controller, and as always, I use a PS3 controller for my games. Let me show you how to configure controllers. If we just go down to joysticks, left-click on this, I'm going to go to configure joysticks. Now I've got my PS3 controller plugged in and we see joystick number one. If I just go down controller, Xbox 360 for Windows, this is my controller. Just select that, close. So that's it, we're in. So let's check this game out. So I'm just pressing enter to go into this game. And by the seams of it, this game doesn't support joy pads, joysticks. So let's just use our keyboards for this game. And I'll tell you what, we're gonna make this look a bit more authentic. All we need to do for this is go to preferences. And if I just go to full screen here, now take a mental note with this, it says Alt plus D. And that's gonna actually be the keyboard combination, the key combination of returning you back to the window mode. So Alt and D, okay. So in fact, I'm gonna do that now rather than go into that option I've just showed you. So I'm gonna press Alt and D on my keyboard. And there we go. So create a new quest one. Keep these, yes. What is I name? Just Jamie, press enter. And if you find a game which is very slow loading, let's just exit out of this full screen by remember Alt and D. If we go down here, we got a warp mode option. If you enable that, when you're loading games and they're very slow, it just fastens things up so you get a lot quicker loading times. But let's just disable that because the game is started. So warp mode, uncheck, and of course Alt and D to go back into the full screen mode. So here we go, this is a game itself. Like I say, I've got no idea how to play this game, but it looks pretty good. It's a nice looking RPG type game. Uh, so we've got a range of options here, one to six, uh, magic missile C. So yeah, really traditional, primitive looking RPG and could be a lot of fun. But anyway, let's exit out of this. If we press Alt and D again to return, let me give you some other options how to make games look a little bit better for you. So if we go to preferences again, if we go to settings here, 
And if we go to display, we got different options here to manipulate how the VIC-20 games present themselves. So for example, if we go to GTK render filter, we can change options here. So bilinear, nearest neighbor, and you know, so on and so forth. If we go to CRT, you can also change the colors and the contrast of how the game looks. So if I just play around to the brightness here, as you can see, contrast, saturation. So at some point you might need to enhance colors or decrease the brightness of games, how they look. We've also got a scan line shade, and I know some people out there like scan lines, so that option is also there. Now, if you want to save your settings, uh, once you've found the right colors you need, the brightness, the contrast, saturation, just be sure to check save settings on exit, otherwise you will lose these settings. And if you're really technical and you know the difference between SID chip sounds, You've even got an option here to change the different variations of the SID chip. So under audio, SID, we got SID model 6581, 8580, and of course that will slightly change the sound of how games play or sound. And another really cool feature with playing VIC-20 games on this emulator is that you've got the ability to save and load games whilst you're playing rather than perhaps waiting for save points if they exist. Very easy to do this. All we're going to do is go to snapshot and from here I'm going to just go to quick save snapshot. So let's play the game a little bit further. So as you can see I've now got a wall in front of me and I'm going to go to load back where I was just a second ago before I saved. So go back to snapshot and quick load snapshot and as you can see we are now back at that point before that wall came so i think that's about it for the vic 20 emulation side of things so i'm going to press alt and d to come back out of this and just close it down and okay so that's it that's your basic vic 20 setup for windows 11 so like i said at the beginning of this video i've got a range of different emulation tutorials on my channel i've also covered different games from say amiga at the moment and c64 and be sure to follow me on facebook because i also upload there that because i also upload on there to give you reminders of uploading games or whatever content and of course, I'm also on Patreon where I've got de several different options for membership. So anyway, until next time, you take care.